So if you watch CBS NAM, you know that we have been following the growing concerns over some U.S. school districts using surveillance software, if you will, technology during remote learning. And one company at the center of all of this is Gaggle, whose software allowed educators to track what students were doing while logged into school-issued devices. Now, at a time of heightened social isolation, supporters praised the software for helping keep students safe. But now students and parents are growing apprehensive and say that the constant monitoring might be causing more harm than good. So here to give us more insight on the software is Gaggle founder and CEO Jeff Patterson. And I'm really glad that you're here um, because, yeah, the company has kind of been in the middle of this kind of heated conversation. Um, so just to kind of remind people, Gaggle monitors the digital files of more than 5 million students across the country uh, each year. And 81 percent of teachers report having similar software in their schools. We want to know just how the software algorithms work um, to pick up concerns. How are they, what are they scanning for? How are they scanning? Sure. <clears throat> Thanks, Anne Marie. I appreciate you having me on the program. So I describe Gaggle as an early warning system to identify children in crisis before tragedy happens, right? We monitor the school's learning platforms, mostly Google Workspaces and Office 365, and we're looking for indications of bullying self-harm, suicide, and school violence. So we use technology to identify these items that might be an issue. And then we have a trained human safety team that reviews those items to determine the severity and urgency before we contact the schools. So our reviewers are looking at the context to determine if an item is related to an actual concern or maybe a simple reference to something like Romeo and Juliet. We don't monitor children's private email addresses or social media. We're only looking at the school provided tools uh, which I, I call those the, the digital playground at the school. And as you're right, we, we help protect over 5 million students. And last year we sent over 140,000 alerts about incidents of students talking about their plans for suicide or self-harm. Yeah, so I want to talk a little bit about that, right? The results um, at Gaggle, you reported that um, it identified a significant increase in threats related to suicide, self-harm, violence nationwide, particularly between March of 2020 and March of 2021 during the pandemic. Um, but in our previous conversations on this topic, we talked about how the software, though it has clearly helped identify students at risk, the feeling that you may be under 24 hour surveillance, I don't know 24 hours because you know it's when they're when students are on the devices using them, but that that may actually inhibit students that instead of expressing themselves openly, they will be more cautious about what they say. And so some of these red flags will go unnoticed. How do you respond to that concern? So we haven't heard from any of our schools that indicated that the use of gaggle has discouraged their kids com from coming forward. And look, as a parent, right, I don't know what's going on in my own children's heads, right? They don't always tell us what we, they, what we, what's really going on. They'll tell us what they think we want to hear. So we're not seeing that. In fact, oftentimes students will create an email or a note that, that they know will be flagged by the system and alerted to a school official. It's a cry for help. And they don't, they don't always walk down the hall to ask an adult. So I'm looking at you know some of the reporting about some of the words that are flagged, and it's, a lot of them make a lot of sense. You know, hate myself, suicidal, hurting myself. It makes a lot of sense. There are other words that come under the category of like possible bullying, um, but they include lesbian, queer, gay, and there has been some criticism that that the software may there, that the algorithm may be a little biased and may focus in on issues affecting LGBTQ kids more than other kids, um, flagging those words as problems when really it's just the kids kind of expressing themselves. So look, we believe the gaggles actually provides more benefit for students in these vulnerable groups, right? We're in place to prevent the bullying and harassment of these students. And, and that's why those terms are in there in the, in the list of flagged words. You know, not everybody knows this, but according to the Trevor Project, LGBTQ students are four times more likely to seriously consider suicide. We just want to be there to help all students. 
Um, so as we have pointed out early on, um, in terms of the effectiveness of the software, most of the information, the data is actually coming from your company. Uh, the surveillance tools are marketed as student safety solutions, but there really isn't a lot of outside research that I'm aware of. Lawmakers have called for your company and at least three other companies to actually reveal their business practices, which I know can be a dicey thing. Your business, there's competition. How is Gaggle working with lawmakers to be more transparent? So we responded to this, the senator's inquiry. Uh, we sent our letter on Tuesday answering all of the questions and really our goal is to be as, as forthcoming as we can be, right? Gaggle's really leading the area, leading this industry. And we wanna make sure you show educators, the senators and the public that we are doing our best to help prevent student tragedies. Look, I can't emphasize enough, there is a mental health crisis in the United States and it's greatly affecting children. According to the CDC, I'll give you two statistics. Going back to August of last year, they found that young adults, that 25% of young adults had seriously considered suicide within the previous 30 days. The CDC did another research study and they were comparing pre and post pandemic visits to, to hospitals, to emergency rooms for suicide attempts. They found a 50% increase in those visits by girls ages 12 to 17. There's something really going on that we all need to be aware of. Listen, before I let you go, um, whenever you talk about collecting data, you always have to talk about privacy. And in some cases, you know, when data is being collected, it's sort of metadata and it's a, a big chunk of information that's thrown into a big vat. But in your case, the information, the data that's being collected is actually tied to a name, a specific person um, who's a minor most often. So I got to ask you about what you're doing to ensure the privacy of the individuals who are being, you know, surveilled. So we have very little data on the students. Generally, it's their name, their email address, their grade, and their school, right? And we hide that data uh, That's a lot. from our human reviews. I'm sorry, what? Uh, that's a, that's we, a we lot. That, I, mean, that, I mean, you could find a kid on social media or on Facebook with that information. I, I suppose you, you're, you're absolutely right. This is the information that we need, though, to be able to alert the schools in emergency situations. You know, we made over 20,000 emergency phone calls to school officials, to principals and counselors, because there was something urgent that the schools needed to be aware of. And then we in terms of to... protecting that data, though, once you have it, um, you know, security measures, I think like probably once a week we do, or maybe about once a week, we do a story about some organization that's been hacked and private information has been revealed. What are you guys doing? So we. You're, this is a big concern for, for every technology provider. We do go some pretty rigorous third-party audits, right? Something called a SOC 2, Type 2 audit, uh, third-party penetration testing. We do a lot to ensure as best we can that our students' data is safe. All right. Hey, Jeff Patterson, I really appreciate you coming on with us. Thank you so much. Thank you, Henry.